Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner, Classic Slash Non Classics. This is episode number 629 and double shot number 533. I got one DC trade and one Marvel trade. First up is DC trade. And this is a trade I picked up from Com Bank Con. Birds of Prey, Volume 2. Collecting the first 11 issues of the Birds of Prey ongoing series. Well, the first time, anyways, and the Birds of Play Ravens one show. This is part of a thing called Girl Frenzy. It's like something to have for like a month. <laughs> yeah, written by Chuck Dixon. He writes everything in here. Uh, Greg Land writes the main issues, and Drew Garcia does the. I think he does the Ravens one shot. <laughs> now, the original second flying for Birds of Play, the collection issues from the first line for the series, just collected the first six issues. Yeah, and then for some reason they skipped over the rest of Chuck Dixon's run, with the exception of stuff that tied into crossovers, and then went straight to Gail Simone's run. No idea why DC did this for, but they did. But luckily enough, in this new printing of the second volume, now, I don't have the first volume. From what I can tell from what's in the first volume for this for this version of the trade series, it does have it's pretty much the first the original first trade just gives like a printing. This one is kind of the same thing with Volume 2, except they threw in issue 711 and that one shot, which had never been put in a trade before, which is nice. Mostly, this particular version of Birds of Prey, now when people think of Birds of Prey, people think of Oracle, Huntress, and Black Canary. This is just, it's kind of like a spy series in a way. It's just Oracle sending uh, Black Canary on various missions, going undercover, working with Jason Barr, that was something, and... Apparently, and this is something really weird for Chuck Dixon to do, I don't know if he... I mean, Black Canary does know martial arts. It seems like half the time she forgets how to defend herself. She gets captured uh, at least twice in, his, in these 11 issues. And then eventually she does get out of it. And Barbara Gordon herself... Now, at this point in time, Black Canary does not know Oracle is Barbara Gordon. She doesn't know that for at least for another year, not into the Hunt for Oracle storyline. Yeah, that's when she finally finds out when 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 uh, Bar Barbara Gordon is, is Oracle, which apparently at this point in time, according to Barbara Gordon, she and Black Canary had met before, but she doesn't know that little factoid about her being Oracle. Um. Yeah, and they even have Nightwing appearing here, which was nice. They even have a clone of Guy Gardner. Yeah, this was a leftover from the Guy Gardner ongoing series, which I think at this point, I think it had only been canceled about two or three years prior to the series ongoing. Yeah, and there was a clone of him called Joe, who is like him, but he's kind of like, he has the powers of Superman, which is really bizarre. Fun little series, and heck, even Black and Air recognize him right away because they're on the jail light together, so... Oh yeah, and... Oh yeah, and the frequent joke of who who who's the best person who like like it is it so enjoyable to get a guy see Guy Gardner get punched in the face? I mean heck in the JLI series he got punched by Batman and Black Canary missed it. <laughs> and I guess Chuck Dixon must have must remembered that, so she finally had uh so he finally had Black Canary punch Guy Gardner in the face. Well, the clone of Guy Gardner. You can kinda say that when it comes to this series, it kinda fixes a couple of things and this just is a rubber lit resolution from the Guy Gardner Warrior comic book. Yeah. And the Ravens are just a rival group for Birds of Prey formed by Cheshire of our people with a couple other people a couple other women who work with her. Now, I think for the case of Black Canary, the only reason why he lets she lets Cheshire go this by fact she's an assassin is because she's the mother of Roy Harper's child. That's probably the only reason why, though she doesn't stay in here. But yeah, she does. Also, those of you who are curious though. Uh, she's called Black Canary, and why doesn't she have her canary cry? There is a very good explanation of why she doesn't have her, her canary cry. You see, there was this miniseries published back in the 1980s known as Green Arrow Longbow Hunters, where she was kidnapped by her serial killer, and she was, like, very heavily tortured to the point where she couldn't have kids, and she lost her canary cry. Though I've heard the reasoning for that, and this is kind of a really stupid reason. Apparently, Mike Earl didn't want any superpower stuff in the Green Arrow, his Green Arrow run. Eventually, she does get her Canary Cry back. Chuck Dixon basically fixes that, like, okay, uh, let, let's let's have her go a few years without our Canary Cry, even though I didn't. Uh, I'm sure he probably didn't like the fact that Black Canary lost her Canary Cry. 
So he waited a few years, and around like the three-year mark for the ongoing series, she does eventually get her Canary Cry back, and her ability to have kids again via the Lazarus Pit. Though she also goes nuts, but that's something off for later, which I think DC is going to collect that. But yeah, fun side of issues. Happy the fact DC decided to do second printing for it because I love this series. It, this is a fan favorite for a lot of people. I don't want my friend Tivia, but. I'm sure he. I'm, I'm sure. I don't know if he's read the series or not, but I personally enjoy this series because I love Birds of Prey. I mean, yeah, it's not the stuff. Based, it's not the era people tend to think of when people think of Birds of Prey. People think of the the group of women uh, going on missions, uh, sent on missions by Oracle. Of course, at this point, it's just Black Canary. Yeah, and here's something really weird though. It's not until issue 86. That the, the the name Birds of Prey comes in the actual group, the actual series itself. Yeah, apparently it was suggestion of Lady Blackhawk. I'm not kidding about that. So it took Gail Simone roughly almost three years into her run to finally come up with that. Yeah. So great book. I'm gonna give this one a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. Also, they even have Tim Drake show up in here for a couple issues. Though she doesn't, she doesn't send him go out to help Black Canary. It's almost like. You kind of see this as a Black Canary solo series, in a way. Yeah. Next up is one of my personal favorite series. Secret Avengers! Volume 1, Mission to Mars. Love this cover. This cover is amazing. When this series first came out, seven years ago, at least eight years ago, I bought the first issue of this thing when it came out. This collects the first five issues of the, of the, the 37 issue volume, the first volume of... Secret Avengers, written by Ed Brubaker, the guy who wrote Captain America for seven years, made him awesome. And artwork by Mike Diodato Jr. And though he only did uh, the first four issues, issue five was done by David Aja, Michael Lark, and Stefano Gardo. Will, Will Conrad Cole drew issue two. Now, the layout for this is quite ingenious. You have Steve Rogers, Moon Knight, Nova, Black Widow, Valkyrie, War Machine, Beast, and Ant-Man. Though he's not on the cover, but yeah, Ant-Man is part of this group. Yeah, I don't know why he's not on the cover, but yeah, he's part of the lineup. Also, wants to point out, though, Black Widow is, is the only character who sticks around for the entire series. Heck, even after the book is relaunched twice, she's still in this series. Yeah, and I'll talk about the... the I do have the trade that collects the, fir, the, fir, the first trade that collects from the second volume for uh, Sega Avengers, but yes. Now, what's the story for this particular series? They're investigating the Serpent Crown, which this has become a recurring plot thread for pretty much most of the series. And their headquarters is get this a uh, a a uh, vehicle known as the Quinn Carrier, which it's owned by Steve Rogers, and this is actually destroyed after he uh, gives up being the leader of this particular group. Yeah, he's only here as a leader of the group for the first 21 issues, and then he hands off the leadership role to Hawkeye. Yeah, Nova's only in here for the first four issues and quits. There's a reason for that. The reason is is, is the miniseries Daniel's Imperative. So he quits to go to space and deal with that. Mm -hmm. This is an awesome series. I freaking love this thing. This is a Black Ops group, which apparently at this point no one knew about. But the later on in the Bendis book, they finally had this group actually appear outside of this particular series. Now, I do like it how Steve Rogers recruited these people, like in the case of well, Moon Knight, he recruited him, I think it was probably just prior to the end of the series, and he, because he says, oh yeah, I have too many voices in my head, so he thinks because he's nuts, he joined, can't join the group, but he does, and Brubaker makes him such an interesting character. Nova was is a curious thing, I think in the case of Black Widow, because he loves doing spy stuff since she's an assassin, why the heck not? In the case of War Machine, I'm not really sure why. Some of these other characters, I'm a little questionable, like, why did he add these particular people to the group? But, well, the obvious reason is because most people have been Avengers, except for Nova, Valkyrie, and the third Ant-Man. Yeah. Now, those of you curious, um, what group was Moon Knight part of? He was part of the West Coast Avengers. Yeah. 
uh, Beast and War Machine part of the main team Avengers. They'll beat War Machine was also part of the West Coast Avengers. Valkyrie has only been part of Defenders. Not kidding about that. That's the only group she's been part of. And she only stuck on for this particular era of the Sega Avengers. She takes on for the entire first time, and then she leaves to go off to join her own version of Defenders. In the case of Beast, Beast also stays on for this whole era before he leaves. War Machine gets dropped from the book at first time, which he comes back in next time. Eric O'Grady gets killed off not long after Rick Remender starts off this run. It starts off his run, yeah. Uh, Bird Rig is only on the book for the first 12 issues before he hands a different writer. Great set of issues, and I highly recommend it. I give this book a 10 out of 10. It is awesome. And also, they fight the Shadow Council. Yeah, they actually get they actually are the main villains of this entire run. Yeah, the Shadow Council, along with their masses of evil. Yeah, which, that's a great thing, and it makes them so interesting. Excuse me, and they, they even brought in LMD called Max Fury, who was a first period Defender series, who's an LMD who looks exactly like um, Nick Fury, and he has Nick Fury's memories, but he's called Max because the, the, to tell the difference between the two of them. Though he later gets killed off uh, about a year into Rick Remender's run before uh, this particular run gets relaunched. Yeah, he gets killed off, and they also bring in the character John Steele, which is nice. Yeah, he's actually going to the Super who actually dies in the series. But that's something for later on. Yeah, like I said, 10 out of 10, amazing book. I highly recommend it. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode going to be episode number 630 and double shot number 534. Okay, but to see you in the next episode. Bye.